Hello, Crossword family. I'm Alexis. And I'm Dejiana. And we're here to share the latest announcements with you. Are you ready for the water? Water baptisms will be next Sunday, April 21st, after the 11 a.m. service. If you have accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior but have never been baptized, this is your opportunity. Baptism is a public declaration of your faith where you go under the water and come up spiritually cleansed as a new creation in Christ Jesus. Please contact the church office immediately to sign up or see Deacon Harris after service today. And family, if you are able, please come out to support and celebrate those who are being baptized. Crossword, our scholarship luncheon is just three weeks away and we need your support. Join us on Saturday, May 4th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. for the Winsome Women's Ministries 9th Annual Scholarship Luncheon right here in the court. We will celebrate our graduating high school students and their accomplishments. Tickets are $80 each and includes a delicious meal and an inspiring program. Your ticket covers your meal while also directly contributing to the scholarships our students receive. Let's work together to ensure our babies have a bright future. And to our graduating seniors who plan to continue their education, all scholarships are due today. Please turn them in by the close of day to be considered for a scholarship opportunity. Mark your calendars. The annual Chosen Youth Retreat is happening from July 19th through the 21st. It's an incredible opportunity for our teens to disconnect from the noise, reconnect with Christ, and forge deeper bonds with their peers. Parents, plan ahead to set aside funds for your children to join this transformative experience. Limited scholarships may be available for those who need them. Plus, we're on the lookout for volunteer chaperones to lend a hand. Interested in being part of this unforgettable retreat as a chaperone? reach out to Pastor Max McCloskey for more information. Let's come together to ensure our youth have a summer retreat filled with lasting faith and memories. Our upcoming series for new members kicks off on Wednesday, May 8th at 7 p.m. Get ready to dive into the heart of Crossword Church's mission and vision directly from Bishop Sykes himself. Sign up with the link on your screen or scan the QR code. This is your opportunity to connect, learn, and ask questions. Remember, as the Word of God teaches us, a clear vision is essential. At Crossword, we're committed to ensuring you understand our purpose and how you play a vital role in fulfilling it. Let's continue growing together in Christ and discovering our place in His great mission. See you there. Let's take a moment to celebrate the following individuals who completed the first quarter new members class. Dejiana, could you tell us a little bit more about what we offer for our members who may be experiencing divorce? Alexis, I sure can. Navigating life after separation or divorce can be challenging, but you're not alone. If you're seeking support and healing, we are here for you. Join us every Thursday at 7 p.m. in the court building for our Divorce Care Support Group. This safe space is tailored to help you rediscover yourself and heal from the journey. Facilitated by Ministers Landon Ozell Butler and Minister Rodney and Tamara Bowen. Our group offers understanding, care, and practical guidance to help you move forward. Through a combination of video sessions from experts and group discussions, you'll gain valuable insight and connect with others on similar paths. Registration is ongoing. You're welcome to join at any point. Secure your spot by registering at the provided link. Space is limited, so don't hesitate to reach out. We're here to walk this journey with you. Family, it's important that you get involved in a life group. Being in fellowship and growing deeper in the Word of God takes spiritual training. Find a life group that is right for you by visiting crosswordchurch.org or the Crossword app or calling the church office. We have something for everyone and we need you to get connected. Thank you to all of our members who have taken the role of volunteers. Volunteers are essential to the health and growth of any church. We need you. Right now, we need trained professionals to expand the medical response team. Give it a try. You might find you enjoy it. So jump in and take the next step to become a Crossword volunteer. Visit the link on the screen and get plugged in. Well, Crossword, these are your announcements for the week. At the end of service, we will have an opportunity to give our tithes and offerings as an act of worship. 
There are several ways you can give. The church app online at crosswordchurch.tv slash give or crosswordchurch.org slash give. You can also give in person, by cash, check, or money order. Take the time to prepare your gift to the Lord and get ready for dynamic praise and anointed word and blessed fellowship. May your, May day, your day be blessed, blessed always. Good morning, Crossroad. Come on, come on. We can praise him better than that. Y'all know what we came to do, right? Did you come to praise the true and living God? Did you come to praise him that woke you up this morning? Did you come to praise him that got you through this week? Can we praise the true and living God? His name is Jehovah. Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Nisi. Jehovah Tiskadu. Are we praising the same God? Hallelujah. Come on, right where you're at. Come on, shake somebody's hand. Wave at somebody. Say hi to your friends, to your family. Yes, because this is the day that the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad. And if somebody needs a smile today, somebody needs a hug today, it's your job to give it to them the way God has given it to you. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, let's look to the Lord. Our Lord and our God, we worship you right now. We thank you for this opportunity to get up today and call on your name, the only name that matters, Father God. Father God, we thank you for who you are, Lord God. The Rose of Sharon, we thank you for who you are, Lord God. The Lily in the Valley, we thank you for who you are, God. The bright morning star, Father God, you are so much more and then some, Father God. And we come to you right now. We want to lay everything at your throne, Father God. We want to ask for forgiveness, Father God. We know what we did this week, Lord God. So please forgive us, Father God. We're all in here beating our chest, letting you know that we're a sinner so you can save us. Lord God, your people need you right now. You know exactly where they're hurting, Father God. You know exactly what they need. Health, wealth, mental, physical, spiritual, Lord God. Please just help right now, Lord God, like only you can. Father God, please touch the man of God as he brings your word today. May we hear something that says, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to be better? What must I do to help somebody the way Christ has helped us? So, Lord God, please set the table for us, Father God. We want to eat so that our souls will be fed by you. And, Father God, we'll be so mindful to give you all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory that you deserve, Father God, right now and forever, all the days of our lives. We love you. We praise you. We adore you. To the mighty name of Jesus, that all the saints of God would say amen. 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 Come on, y'all. Take us to the throne. Hallelujah. Anybody come to praise God this morning? We come to give him glory. He said he's our realms of sharing. He's forever our God. His name is Jesus. What's the greatest name, y'all? What's the greatest name? What's the greatest name? Let's do it. Let's lift him up. Hallelujah. He's worthy. Put your hands on it. Play, brothers. We give you glory.
for sustaining us thank you that we're able to you breathe the breath of life in us this morning it wasn't our alarm clocks it was your touch and we thank you for it we want to be more like you we want to be more like you how many know he's the potter and we're the clay (laughs) he's shaping us molding us potter oh potter Sought this heart from the beginning, but still you put this clay in your hand. Even though it was ugly and filthy, you called it the best kind. You called me the best kind. So I'll say hallelujah to the potter who came and made me new. Hallelujah to the potter who came and made me new. Say hallelujah. Say hallelujah to the potter who came and made me new. You sound beautiful, Zion. Lift it up. Say hallelujah to the potter who came and made me I think you know it by now. Someone sing it to your father. Say hallelujah. To the potter who came and made me. Yeah, hallelujah. Hallelujah to the potter who came and made me. Say thank you, thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Jesus. Say 
Thank you, thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Put me on your wheel now. And spin me around, spin me around. And place me on your plane now. Until you see through me, and I'm ready to come out. And know that we Broken things and make them beautiful. <laughs> Will you take broken things and put them back together again? Will you take broken things and make them beautiful? Will you take broken things and make them whole again? Will you take broken things, Jesus, and make them beautiful? Will you take broken things and put them back together again? Say, oh, you take broken things and make them beautiful. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
and you best believe that he'll make he'll make something good out of you yeah if you're broken and weary come and go with me yeah, yeah. to the potter's house yes and you best believe say he'll make he'll make something good out yeah. of you yeah say he'll make he'll make something good out of you yeah 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 he'll make something good That's a prayer in and of itself. Praising God in season and out of season. Praising God when you feel like it and when you don't feel like it. Praising God for waking you up this morning. That's enough right there. Somebody laid down last night and transitioned. You ought to thank God that you are in the land of the living. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You can look back over your life and thank God for the little things. Thank God for the big things. Thank God when you feel like it. Thank God when you don't feel like it. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We're just setting the table for the anointing of God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Yes. He's an old time God. He's a right now God. He's not a seasonal God. He's a right now God. God is worthy to be praised. In the privacy of your home, in your prayer closet, you are to praise ye the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Our Father and our God, we just want to rejoice in your presence. We come before you as your children. Father, we just ask right now for a purging to take place in each of us. 
we confess that we don't always get it right. We don't always have the right thoughts. We don't always say the right things. So, Father, we ask for your divine forgiveness. We admit that we still sin, that we still fall short, that we still make mistakes. So, Father, pull out the negativity and insert your anointing. Remove the frustration and give us the ability to praise you openly and honestly. Father God, I uplift these, your children, on this Sunday morning, those in the sanctuary and those who are watching online. Father God, I pray that you'll just saturate them with your love. You know the heartache. You know the pain. You know the frustration. You know what they're going through. Father, I pray that you will deliver them not just on this day, but every day they are breathing your air. We need you, Lord. We need your healing power. We need your grace. We need your mercy. We need your mercy. We need your mercy. Your grace and mercy has seen us through. Now, Father, as I decrease, may you increase. As I get out of your way, have your way. Father, allow your word to save souls, to change lives. Allow your anointing to flow in this place. Father God, do what only you can do. Father, as we continue to move forward in the center of your will, join us now and let us teach. It's in Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Come on, give it up for our praise team. Ushering in the spirit for our band members, using their giftedness to be a blessing to the kingdom of God. Amen? To our guests, you should have a blue outline. If you don't have a blue outline, raise your hands and the ushers will get this outline to you. I want to focus on part two of our series, With Jesus, I Will Make It. How many of you believe that? With Jesus, I will make it. I want to focus on the fact that we just need to thank God. I thank God. Amen? First Chronicles 29, 16, let's read this together. Lord our God, we have gathered all this to build your temple for worship to you. But everything has come from you. Everything belongs to you. Oh, I like that. Read that again. Let me hear you. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. With Jesus, I will make it. With Jesus, you can make it. With Jesus, you are more than a conqueror, more than an overcomer. With Jesus, no matter what you go through, Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. In this world, we will have troubles. In this world, we do have challenges. In this world, especially as we mature, especially as we age, there's challenges in this world for the best Christian. If you're not going through something, you're not really walking in God's anointing. The truth is, God has to allow us to go through some things so we can really focus on who he is. Because when things are going well, we have the propensity or the tendency, the proclivity to not give God the glory, to not give God the credit. It's because of who God is that we're able to accomplish great and mighty things. It's because of who God is that we're able to be gainfully employed, that we're able to raise a family, that we're able to start businesses, that we're able to share the good news of the gospel because it's God's grace and mercy. That's why you should always have a, a thankful heart. Every time you wake up in the morning, you ought to have a, a praise on your lips. Before you get out of bed, you ought to praise God. Before you get in the shower, you ought to praise God. If you have warm water, you ought to praise God. For the little things, you can open up your refrigerator and pick what you want to eat every morning. You ought to just praise God. Lord, we just thank you for the little things. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be your children because we're not doing God a favor when we receive Christ. God wants a family, but don't you know that God is God no matter what we do? But we have to focus on the fact that if we're going to make it in this world, we have to keep holding up Jesus. With Jesus, I will make it. You have to have that as your mantra. Have that as your clarion call. No matter what this sin-sick world throws my way, I'm going to be focused on who God is. That's why, again, we need to praise God. First Chronicles, uh, again, says that we need to focus on who He is. Lord, 
are God, we are gathering all this to build your temple to worship you. We have gathered all this to build your temple, to uplift the name of the Lord, to uplift Christianity, to not be ashamed of the gospel of Christ. We'll gather everything together to build your temple so we can worship you. Worshiping God is a lifestyle so we can commune with you. Worshiping God on good days, on bad days, on I don't feel like it days. Worshiping God is not based on what you have. It's not based on what God has done for you, and you pray that God is going to continue to bless you. But worshiping God, if you're breathing God's air, that's enough. If you woke up this morning, that's enough. Praising God for the little things will get you through the heartaches of this world. Praising God for the little things will show God how much you appreciate Him. But everything has come from you. That's why we praise him. Everything you have, yes, you worked hard. Yes, you got that degree. Yes, you are wise as a serpent, yet gentle as a dove. But everything comes from you, and everything belongs to you. That's why you thank God for what you're driving. You thank God for the house you live in, but understand it still belongs to God. No matter what you have, you say, Lord, I'm going to thank you because I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I'm not ashamed to be called a Christian. I'm in love with a man, and that man is Jesus. I'm not ashamed to let people know that Jesus is real. That does not mean you have to walk around with a big black Bible slapping people across their head, telling them to turn or burn and all that old foolishness. It's just about living the lifestyle. Say, you know what, baby girl? I've been there. I've done that. You know what, man? The young man, I've been there. I've done that. We need to be transparent. You don't have to tell it all, but we need to be transparent that we all have heartache and we all have pain. And we all go through some stuff, but at the end of the day, we know that Jesus is still real. Amen. That's why we got to learn how to thank God in season and out of season. We have to thank Him. I'm going to walk you through this quickly. We have to thank Him all the time. Three reasons why we need to thank God. First one says, I thank God for His grace. I do what? Look at the person next to you and tell them it's all about the grace of God. I thank God for His grace. Your grace and mercy has seen me through. I thank God because sometimes we forget things of what He has done for us in the past. That's why I love what the psalmist wrote here in Psalm 103. It's transparent. The psalmist is looking back over their life and is looking back over their life and saying, you know what, I have been through some things and I will not forget. He said, matter of fact, let's read this together. This is powerful. I will not forget the glorious things God does for me. He forgives all my sins. He heals me. He ransoms me from hell. He surrounds me with love. He fills my life with good things. He is merciful and tender toward those who don't deserve it. He is slow to get angry. He never bears a grudge. He has not punished us as we deserve for our sins. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, that's so powerful. If I'm being completely transparent, I can preach the whole sermon right here. I say, you know what? When I read this over and over again, I can preach the whole sermon right here. He said, I will not forget the glorious things. I will not forget the pathway I have traveled. Because, again, we had a propensity to forget the heartache and the pain. He said, I will not forget how I used to be. I will not forget when I was going through. I will not forget how my life has transformed people and transformed myself. I will not forget what you have done for me. I will not forget the glorious things God has done for me. Sometimes when you look back over your life, you need to remember what he has done for you already. Yes, you're praying that God's going to give you a breakthrough. Yes, you're praying God's going to heal you. Yes, you're praying that God is going to highly favor you. But you need to look back over your life and say, you know what? God has already done enough for me. Oh, my God. He's already done enough for me. I will not forget the glorious things that you have done for me. The first one, he says, he forgives my sins. He forgives all my sins. Now, this is something that you need to keep close to the vest. He forgive all my sins. You need to stop telling everybody your business because God has forgiven that mess that you used to do. You don't have to share everything on social media. You have to tell everybody about your filth and about your negativity. You are blessed and highly favored. You just praise God that he has forgiven all of your sins. The stuff that you are afraid to tell somebody, the stuff that you think you got away with, God still sees it. God still knows. He forgives all my sins. 
that's why you need to hang out with folks who will praise you for who you are today, not what you used to do in the past. If you're around a group of folks that keep reminding you of your filth, reminding you of your failures, that's the wrong group of people. You need people who are going to forgive you because God has forgiven you. You have forgiven yourself. You need people who are going to stand next to you and say, you know what? I'm not going to keep throwing your mess back in your face. He forgives all my sins. The stuff that you better not tell anybody about. The stuff you used to do back in the day. The stuff you used to do when you thought nobody was looking. But God sees all. He knows all. But he has forgiven you. Therefore, you need to forgive yourself. Because when you are connected to God, you have the ability to say, you know what? Yes, I did that. And now I apologize to God. I apologize to the offended. But I am not going to allow that to define who I am. Because God has wiped the slate clean. That's why I stopped saying, Father God, you remember when I used to? No, let it go. God said, I forgot about that. But thank you for reminding me. Now we're going to deal with it. God says, I have forgiven you. Does anybody feel forgiven this morning? God says, I have forgiven all of your sins. But it gets better than that. It says, he heals me. Does anybody need some healing up in here? He heals me. When we think about healing, we think about physical healing, and there's nothing wrong with that. We believe that God still heals, and God is still able to change what's going on inside your body. But you better thank God for healing that mind of yours. I thank God that he changed the way I think. I thank God that my thoughts are now his thoughts, that my thoughts are focused on who he is, focused on the kingdom of God, not on this man-made world. He is the one who forgives all my stuff, and he heals us. No matter what you're going through, God wants to heal you. Let me say it again. No matter what you are going through, God wants to heal you. And again, sometimes this is a healing of your self-esteem. you got to fall in love with Jesus and fall in love with yourself. Maybe that's your healing. you got to fall in love with you. Look in the mirror and say, you know what? I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Look in the mirror and love you some you. Fall in love with Jesus and fall in love with yourself. Say, God made me this way. I'm going to be all that he has created me to be because he has healed me. But it gets better than that. The psalmist said, he ransoms me from hell. He does what? Oh, my God. That means you are this close to hell, and God snatched your dirty behind and pulls you away from that mess. You are this close to destruction, but God says, you know what? I can use Sykes in the future. Yes, he's driving too fast. Yes, he's smoking where he shouldn't be smoking. Yes, he can cuss like an hour and a half and not apologize to anybody. Yes, he's in the world, but we can use him. You better remember how you used to be. Oh, my God. Praise be to God that he ransoms us from hell. That means even though your eyebrows may be singed off, at least you are not in hell. Oh, you are living a hellish life. That's why I tell you often, we need to stop talking about back in the day. Oh, back in the day. Oh, back in the day. Back in the day, you were this close to hell. Back in the day, you were this close to destruction. Back in the day, you were broke. Busting and discussing, but oh, I wish we were back in the day. Remember, we're back in the day. Stop it. I'm glad I'm in the land of the living now. I'm glad I'm covered by God's grace and mercy right now. Y'all can go back in the day. Woo, 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 woo. Y'all can do that mess. Oh, I thank God that I can praise him and get all happy in my bedroom all by myself. I can praise him until I feel better. That's in the here and now. You don't need the thump the thump thump B. You just need Jesus. 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 Oh, praise be to God that he pulls us up out of the muck and the miry clay. I told you I could preach this one here for the whole sermon. Say, he surrounds me with love. He surrounds me with love. Love God, love other people. That's what we believe in in Christianity and at Crossword, love God, love other people. If you get that part right, your life will change. Love God, love other people. Not people who look like you, not people who think like you. Love God, love other people. This was a, a trick question that the Pharisees and the Sadducees threw at Jesus, trying to confuse him, trying to stop people from following him. They said, preacher man, prophet man, son of God, 
what is the greatest commandment that we are to follow? At that time, they had 613 commandments. So no matter, no matter what Jesus said, they would say, you know what, it's not that one. That's number 500. Now, we're looking for number 600. But Jesus summed up all the commandments. In one statement, he said, the greatest commandment is to love God, love other people. On this, all the prophets hung their head on. Love God, love other people. People who are going through, love other people who disagree with you. Love them into heaven. Love them even though you don't like what they're doing. It's a dangerous thing just to hate on a bunch of folks just because they don't look like you, just because they don't think like you. Love God, love other people. If the church got that right, all churches will overflow. If the church got that right, young people will stay connected to the church. Let them be who they are. Let them be, love God, love other people. Let them be who they are. Young people, they don't know any better. Let them flow the way they flow. They want to come in in jeans and a white t-shirt. Let them come in like that. At least they came into the church. If they want to come in wearing their hat, which I don't like, I don't like none of that. I'm very conservative. I don't like none of that. But they want to come in with their hat turned backwards. I'm not going to condemn them yet. I'm just funny. I'm just funny. Let them come in the way they flow, and God will change them. Not you beating them down and talking about them and talking against them. Let God change them. At least they came into the church. The Word of God will teach them how they should dress. The Word of God will teach them how they should. I told you I could preach this the whole sermon. The Word of God will change them. That's why as Christian folks, we need to stop being so dogmatic. God wants us to be a blessing to others. Therefore, we need to understand that it's about his love. He fills my life with good things. Say good things. Does anybody have any good things? PK is my good thing. Come on, girl. Come on, girl. Go, go, go. PK is my good thing. He fills our life with good things. She's grinning. You know you like it. Come on, don't, don't front. You know you like it. I still chase her around the house. I, I do. Come, come here, girl. I'm a little bit slower now. Come, come, come here, girl. I told you I was get stuck on this one passage right here. He surround me with love. Love in your household, love in the community, love in other people. Love God and love other people. He fills my life with good things, with a spouse, with children, with family, with friends, with good co-workers. He will give us good things. And then he says, he is merciful and tender toward those who don't deserve it. You don't deserve to be saved. I don't deserve to be saved. You don't deserve to be blessed and highly favored. I don't deserve to be blessed and highly favored. You don't deserve what you have. I don't deserve what I have. It's by God's grace and mercy. He is merciful and tender towards those who don't deserve it. Thank God that he's patient and long-suffering. Thank God that, yes, he's an on-time God, but thank God that he knows what you're going through. Thank God that he is allowing you to get closer and closer to him. Thank God that he is merciful and tender towards those who don't deserve it. But I come to church who don't deserve it. But I'm a giver who don't deserve it. Again, it's God's grace and mercy. That's why we keep pushing forward by faith. Then he says, he is slow to get angry. That means God gives you a second chance. Oh, no, I messed that one up. A third chance. No, I messed that one up. A fourth chance. No, I messed that one up. A fifth chance. That's not five. is the number of grace. A fifth chance. No. Sixth chance. No. He gives us another chance. Praise God that we are living on another chance. Amen? He never bears a grudge. He has not punished us as we deserve for our sins. I thank God for his grace and thank God for his mercy. The second thing, I thank God for his plan for me. How many of you know that God has a plan for your life? I thank God for his plan for me. Very critical you get this. I thank God for his plan for me. You're not a copycat, even if you are a twin. I thank God for his plan for me. Stop hating on how God's blessing other people and figure out what God wants you to do with your anointing. 
I thank God his plan for me. That's why we encourage people who are successful. We encourage people who are making a difference in the world. And then we pick their brain to figure out how we can, too, be a blessing to this whole wide world. I thank God for his plan for me. God has something for you to accomplish, but you need to stand on your knees asking God, what does he want you to do? Acts 10, 38. Let's read this together. You know of Jesus of Nazareth, how God anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power, and how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was, God was with them. I thank God for the plan he has for me. You know Jesus, how God anointed him. Say anointed. Everybody in here has an anointing. You are anointed. You are anointed. Matter of fact, say it to me. You are anointed. Say, I'm anointed. Say it again. You are anointed. Again, that's not just reserved for the preachers, not just reserved for the band members, not just reserved for the people up front. All the people up on stage is anointed. They are anointed. But you are anointed also. You know, Jesus of Nazareth, how God anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power. That's why I teach in this church, we pray to Father God, we pray to Jesus. Are you praying to the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is the God who lives in you. Do you acknowledge the Holy Spirit? Father God, in the name of Jesus, we love you, that's good, but are you acknowledging the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is the anointing of God, the power of God. The Holy Spirit is with you wherever you go. The Holy Spirit is the one who takes your prayers to the throne of grace. The Holy Spirit is the one who brings to your remembrance everything that God has said, everything that Jesus has said. It's the Holy Spirit that reminds you that he was with you when you were going through the muck and the miry clay. The Holy Spirit is the one that says, you know what, I am with you. God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. It's the anointing that you need to be a business owner. It's the anointing that you need to raise your children. It's the anointing that you need to push forward by faith. God wants us to understand that it's his Holy Spirit. He is the one who gives us the ability to create wealth. He is the one who will never leave us nor forsake us. Again, how he went about doing good, the Holy Spirit is the one that is with us forever and ever and ever. For God was with him. How many of you know that God is with you right now? In season, out of season, God is with you. Why is it so important? Because you can't give up on God because he will not give up on you. Yes, the plan may be delayed, but it has not been denied. The plan may be delayed, but it has not been denied. The plan has been delayed because you have not put yourself in a position to receive what God has for you, but it hasn't been denied. I'm fearful that many Christians will get to heaven and God will say, you know, I had all this for you. But you gave up right before your breakthrough. God says, I, I have a plan for your life, but you gave up because it was too difficult. Instead of leaning on me, instead of trying me, instead of holding on to my unchanging hand, God was with Jesus. God was with him. God is with us. Therefore, we need to focus on God's plan for our life. Jeremiah 29, 11. Read it to me. For I know what? That's not my word. That's God's word. He said, for I know the plans I have for you, plans for good and not for evil, plans for good things and not for evil, plans for good things. Your grace and mercy has seen me through plans for good things. Are you stepping out in faith? Again, the only way you gain experience is to fail and try something different. Are you stepping out saying, Lord, I'm tired of being me. I'm trusting you with my whole heart. I'm tired of being frustrated. I'm trusting you with my whole heart because you have a plan and a purpose for my life. And listen to me closely. It takes time to figure it out. You don't stay unemployed and say, Lord, I'm not going to work until you tell me exactly what job I'm supposed to take. You better take some type of job. Well, I'm not going to do it. Until God speaks to me and tells me that he wants me to be CEO of this corporation, I'm not going to move. Stop it. You better accept something to show God that you're willing to work, to show God that you're willing to try, even when it's beneath you, because God has a plan for you, but he's trying to see if you can handle what he wants to do. Do you? 
Can you handle the elevation? God will see if you're going to push forward. I shared my testimony before that I was working at Bank of America and, and didn't have enough money to keep our second son in college. I was going at the last moment to pay that fee to keep him in college. I didn't have it. Even though I was suited and booted at Bank of America, I, I had to get a second job. And the only job that I could get that would allow me to be at church on Sunday because I was a youth pastor. I was at Wednesday night Bible study. I was at the church all the time. I said, well, I cannot miss being at the church if I accept this second job that's going to interfere with that timing. So I took a job as a paper boy, driving through the richest parts of Riverside at 3 a.m. in the morning, throwing out papers. Nobody knew but my wife. I was Mr. Sykes at Bank of America wearing a suit and tie. Nobody knew that I was a paper boy at night throwing out papers to keep our son in college because I didn't know God was going to call me to be a pastor, but I knew I had to keep our son in college, so I took something beneath me, and God said, you know what, because you are faithful with a little bit, because you're not ashamed. You're trying to support your family even though this is beneath you. I'm going to use you one day. Again, this is before I knew he was going to call me the pastor. You better hear what I'm saying. It wasn't like, oh, I know God's going to call me the pastor, so I need to do this to impress him. No. It was about our children. So I took something that I hated. Oh, I'm the paper boy. And I never missed my paper route. And throwing the paper is seven days a week, in, 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 in case you don't understand. So that means that I had to get up, because I was a youth pastor, and throw papers on Sunday morning. And they go take a shower and put on a suit and tie and go teach to you. Never once did I tell them, oh, I'm tired today because I was throwing papers all night. Nobody knew. You better hear what I'm saying. Sometimes your breakthrough happens when you are willing to take what's beneath you so God can elevate you and use you. God is looking at your heart. If you're doing it for your own stuff, it's not going to be a blessing to anyone else. God's not behind that. He said, I know the plans I have for you, plans for good and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope, but it takes work to be used and elevated by God. Amen. The third thing, I thank God for changing me. Woo-wee. I thank God for changing me. I was never a crip, but I don't know if a crip walk goes there. I don't even know how to do it. I don't know if something goes there. I thank God for changing me. Somebody got that. Yeah, it used to be you. I thank God for changing me. Philippians 2.13, read it with me. God is working in you, giving you the desire to obey him and the power to do what pleases him. Read it again while I talk to my people. Shouldn't the air be on to, in Jesus' name? Read it again, please. God is working in you. He's pulling out the muck and the miry clay. He's pulling out the foolishness, giving you the desire to listen to his voice before you listen to the voice of the world, giving you the power to listen to what he has decreed, to what he wants you to do, to obey his will for your life. He's giving you the desire to obey him and the power to do what pleases him, not flossing. Not saying, I need it just for me. He gives you the power to do what is going to promote his kingdom. And again, it's not just about Sunday. It's about being a beacon of light in the workforce, a beacon of light in the secular environment. God says, you are pleasing me. That's why I'm blessing you. That's why I'm giving unto you because God says, I want you to understand it comes from me and not from you. It comes from God and not from whom? It does not come for any of us. 2 Corinthians 3.18, read it with me, please. And as the Spirit of the Lord works within us, we become more and more like Him. I like this. As the Spirit of the Lord works within each of us, we become more and more like Him. That means it's a process. Transformation takes time. As we are focusing on the Word of God, as the Spirit is in you, as the Spirit is working in you, we become more and more like Him, like Jesus. More and more when we lean on the Holy Spirit. More and more when we say, Holy Spirit, I need your power right now. 
Holy Spirit, I need you to tell me what I am supposed to do. The Father is God. Jesus is God. The Holy Spirit is God. As I said, we treat the Holy Spirit like an afterthought. You better pray to the Holy Spirit. That's your anointing. That's your ability to create wealth. That's your ability to be gainfully employed. That's your ability to push through when you are going through. That's your ability to get a prayer through. If you're not praying in the anointing of the Holy Spirit, that does not get to the throne of grace. Matter of fact, when you're praying and you're not under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, all God hears is blah, 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 blah. You promised me you weren't going to do that anymore. Blah, 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 blah. You pray in the colloquial terms, blah, 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 but we pray in the Holy Spirit. And when we pray in the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God takes your prayer to the throne of grace. The triunion God has, hears your prayer and will answer your prayer when you thank God that a change has taken place. Has anybody been changed up in here? You thank God that the change is taking place. I'm still changing. I'm still trying to get better. See, we'll never arrive. We'll never get there. That's why you got to keep on trying. Don't you rest on your laurels. Don't you say, you know what, I've already done enough. You got to keep on keeping on. God will tell you now is the time for you to shut it down, and that happens when you transition. But in the meantime, even though you're moving a little bit slower, God still wants you to be faithful unto him, and you thank him that he's still working on the inside of you. Am I making sense right now? And the Spirit of the Lord works within us as we become more and more like Jesus. That's why I tell you again and again, I'll be a better pastor next year than I am now. I'll be a better pastor next week, next month, next year. I'll be better because I'm asking God to work through me. We never are satisfied. We want more and more of God's anointing. I thank God for changing me. I thank God that I'm not like I used to be. Does anybody have that testimony? I thank God that I'm not like I used to be. That's why we need to have a thankful mind and a thankful heart if we're truly going to be blessed by God. So three ways I can thank God. Very practical ways. Three ways. The first way is by serving him. Say that aloud. By what? By serving the purposes of God. All throughout this sermon, I've been talking about the fact it's not just about Sunday morning. We need good Christians in a secular environment by serving the Lord. The word Psalm 100 verse 2 says what? Serve what? Serve, Serve the Lord with gladness. That was horrible when you read it, but let's do it like we are glad about it. Let's do it again. Serve the Lord with gladness. That's why you're not being blessed. In <laughs> Jesus' name. Read it like you mean it. Again. Serve the Lord with gladness. That's the anointing right there. Serve the Lord with gladness. Even though you have issues, even though you have challenges, serve the Lord with gladness because you know that he has not forsaken you. You know that he has not abandoned you. Serve the Lord with gladness, with a smile on your face and with a joy in your heart. Serve the Lord with gladness in the church and on your job, in the community. Serve the Lord with gladness because you woke up and you're still breathing God's air. You woke up and you're still healthy. You may be moving a little bit slow, but you're still able to get around Serve the Lord with gladness. Lord, I thank you that I have another day to do your bidding, another day to serve you, another day. Again, don't miss what I'm saying, not just in the church, but we need good Christians all over this planet, good Christian business owners, good Christian teachers. We need Christians who are sold out to the cause of Christ and have a mentality that I'm going to serve the Lord no matter how I feel, I will serve him. Hebrews 12, 28, read that aloud to me. Since we what? Since we have a kingdom that nothing can destroy, this body may deteriorate, but the spirit lives on forever. You are a part of the kingdom of God, but when you transition, you are going to be in the kingdom forever and ever. Since we have the, a kingdom that nothing can destroy, let us please God by serving him with thankful hearts. Lord, I thank you for the ability to serve others. I thank you for the ability to have the right heart to be a blessing to whomsoever. So, Father God, I'm going to serve you with a thankful heart. How often do you thank God? Not just during Thanksgiving season, but how often do you thank God? Lord, I just thank you. That's a whole prayer. Lord, I just thank you. Lord, I appreciate you. Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you for loving me. 
Lord, thank you for the family I have. Thank you for the friends that I have. Thank you, Father, that you have blessed me with finances and resources. You have blessed me with a mind that I can still have cognitive thoughts. Lord, I thank you that you are still working through me. You better thank God for the little things. I thank God I serve him with thankful hearts. Since we have a kingdom that nothing can destroy, God's kingdom lives on forever and ever and ever. The second way, three ways we, I thank God, by giving to him. And there was silence throughout the land. <laughs> I thank God by giving to his purposes, by supporting the local church. I thank God by sowing the seed so that people could come in and get resources. I, I, I thank God by giving him an offering. Psalm 50 verse 14 says what? Give an offering to show thanks to God. Give him what you promise. Give an offering to show thanks to God. Every church that's really operating under the banner of Christianity is a giving church. People give, and then the church gives back to the community. That's why we're blessed as a church, because we feed people. We clothe people. I share this often. We have a team that comes out twice a month, and we just give away good food. We give away good clothes. That's why I've said if you got that outfit in the back of your closet that you can't fit, that's my prom dress. I, I, I remember when I was eight. Brother man, you're not going to get back into that suit that day is gone, but it's the one I got married in. It's gone. <laughs> How about donating things that you no longer wear? We all have stuff in our closet that we don't even wear anymore. How about donating it to our outreach ministry? PK, Pastor Karen, is over that ministry. We have people who serve, and we give back to the community. That's why even if people never come to church on Sunday morning, they know crossword because we are meeting the needs, and we're not talking about just homeless people. Listen to me closely. We have over 200 cars that will drive through to get food, and these are working people who just need a hand up. They're not under a bridge. They're not complaining. They just need a hand up, and they look forward to coming to Crossword to get good food, to get clothes that they can wear and go on an interview. That's why I talk about these things over and over again. I've given away clothes, good suits, and things that I just don't wear anymore. I don't wear it anymore. We don't need your junk. We need somebody who can pick up something off the rack and go for a job interview. We're talking about good stuff that you just don't wear anymore. Give an offering to show thanks to God. First Chronicles 29, 16 says what? Everything comes from you and everything belongs to you. Everything means what in Espanol? Everything. It means what in Swahili? Everything. Everything has come from you, and everything belongs to you. That's why we need to have a heart of giving, giving back to the Lord, giving to his kingdom, giving to his churches. And again, if you still missed it, if you don't want to give through Crossword, find a church that you can give through because that pastor needs for you to give also. When you have that heart, that's when God's going to replenish Whatever you give away by giving unto his kingdom. We had the same folks tithing. Praise God for our tithes. Praise God for those who are giving. But are you giving to what you see happening here at Crossword? Are you giving to make sure that we're able to meet the bandwidth that God has entrusted us with to be a beacon of light in a dark and perverse world? We must be willing to give unto him. And then the, the third thing, by telling others about him. By doing what? Does anybody know that you're a Christian? Do your neighbors know that you love Jesus? Do your coworkers know? I'm not talking about being over the top with it, but do they know that you love Jesus? Is Isaiah 12, 4, read it with me. Thank the Lord, praise his name, tell the world about his wondrous love and how mighty he is. You better tell somebody how God changed you, how he made you over you better tell somebody that he's the reason you are who you are. Thank the Lord for all that he has done for you. 
tell somebody. Let them know that God is not a respecter of a person, that he will bless whomsoever we're willing to share with somebody. I, I, I'm done. We're going to have a baby dedication this morning, but I, I want you to understand that I have people who follow me online that I went to high school with because they see the transformation. They see what we're doing here. They see the heart of this church. They see the heart of giving. What I'm trying to get you to understand, you have to have that right heart. If you're going to be blessed of God, tell others about him. Let them know that Jesus changed you, and he still is a God who will change them. Our Father and our God, we praise you. We honor you. We adore you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this season that we are in. We thank you, Father, for your blessings. We thank you for your favor. So we just say thank you. With you, we can make it. With you, we will make it. Thank you, Lord, for being patient and long-suffering. Thank you, Lord, for being the God who healeth thee. Thank you, Lord, for putting us in our right mind. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy. Now, Father, I pray for these, your children, those who are saved and those who need to be saved. I pray that you allow your spirit to touch their heart to receive Jesus if they haven't done it already. Father, move by your spirit. It's in Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Now, before we close and have a baby dedication, yeah, I'm doing that right now. Before we close, is there one who needs to know Jesus? Is there one who needs to receive Christ as their Lord and Savior? You don't have to move. I just want to pray for you real quick. Just raise your hand to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, to receive the free gift of salvation, to make sure that you're going to be in heaven with the Lord forever and ever and ever. It's just a prayer saying, Lord Jesus, I want you to come into my heart. Is there one this morning to receive Jesus into their heart, to cheat death and forever live in the kingdom of God? Is there one this morning? Is there one? I see one. I see you, young man. Is there another? You don't have to walk down. I know that can be daunting sometimes. Is there another to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior? Amen. Young man, I'm going to pray a prayer. I want you to say this prayer aloud, or you can say it silently, but make sure it gets into your heart. To receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, simply say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. Come into my heart and save me. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are God. Come into my heart and give me eternal life. Lord Jesus, I believe that you're coming back again, that you died for my sins, that you were resurrected three days later. Come into my heart and give me everlasting life. It's in your name I pray. Amen, amen, amen. <laughs> Praise God for you. Young man, we have a free Bible for you. The usher is going to get that Bible to you. That Bible will give you the next steps. I pray that you will connect to Crossword, but if Crossword does not float your boat, you need to find a good church home that you can let them know I'm a new believer and I need you to partner with me because Satan is crafty. He's going to try to confuse you this afternoon to get you to not believe that Jesus has changed your life. Amen? So love and appreciate you. Give him another hand praise. Before we close... We have a baby dedication. If you all can be ever so patient right now, it won't take long. If I can have the Lockett family come forward. Look at that walk. That's right.
Yeah, come on, fam. It takes a whole village. That's right. Amen. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Baby dedication. We dedicate children unto the Lord until they reach the age of accountability. We dedicate them because we know in this world there's challenges, in this world there's troubles. So we want to dedicate a child to the Lord, understanding that it takes a village to raise that child. Understanding that we need God's protection, especially in this day and age we live in. It's not just the family, it's about the extended family. Because the truth is, in this world, we have people who will say that Jesus is not real. People who will say that that Christianity is not real. And really, the world is after our children. Amen? So we need to be dogmatic that we're going to raise them well. So Zion? Zion. Amen? And Naomi? Amen. Strong name, Zion. Amen? And the, yeah, give my hand praise. Derek and Jasmine, I got that right in Jesus' name. Amen. We got Godparent Diamond Cook. Amen. We're going to have a dedication, but I, before I pray the prayer of dedication, I want you all to understand that there will become a time, there will come a time that these young children, Zion and Naomi, will get to a point where they will say, you know what, I don't believe that Jesus stuff. This world is after our children. This world wants to confuse them, especially with the online things we have going on. Even though you're going to raise them in a Christian home, they'll get to the age, normally it happens about 12 or 13, they lose their natural mind in Jesus' name. Where they might say, you know, I don't believe in that Jesus stuff. That's why it takes a village. When they run to aunties and uncles and friends saying, you know, I don't believe in that Jesus stuff, it takes the village saying, no, Jesus is real. It takes the village to say, you know what, no, you need to hold on to God's unchanging hand. That's why it takes all of you to connect with this family to raise these beautiful children. Amen? Diamond, you have your hands full. Just want you to know that up front. Amen? So we're going to pray this prayer of dedication and give these children to the Lord. Our Father and our God, we thank you for allowing us to be witnesses to what you are doing in this place on this day. Father, in the name of Jesus, we uplift the Lockett family to you right now. Father, I thank you for their love for you and their love for their children. I uplift Derek to you right now. You have made him a strong man of God. I uplift Jasmine to you right now. You have made her a strong woman of God. You have connected this couple together to flourish, to raise their family well. I thank you, Father, for Diamond willing to step in and assist the family and all of these family members. It takes a village to raise these children. Father God, we uplift these children to you. I pray that you will allow Zion to realize that you are real and Naomi to realize that you are real. Father, we pray your grace and mercy around them. You have allowed them to be birthed into this world. You have already given them a future and a hope. We decree success. We decree no hurt, harm, or danger will befall them. Father, protect these young hearts. Let them know that you love them. You allow them to be born into this world, to make a difference in this world. So we just thank you. I pray over this extended family. They are a strong family, an anointed family. Father, we thank you that we have a strong church family that will support them. Father, receive these children upon your throne of grace. Let them know through the years that you have them in the palm of your hand. Father, we submit all things unto you. It's in Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Now, we're going to take some pictures. Well, I'll hold it for you. We're going to take some pictures before we let you go. Is that okay, church? Yeah, we like pictures. I don't know what you... We love pictures.
Amen. God bless you. Come on, give him another hand, praise. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Thank, thank you all for being patient when we do these things. I know it extends service, but this is very important. Are we going to close out this service with our tithes and offerings? Amen. Oh, that's too weak. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. Hilarious giver. Tithes and offerings. All churches work under the same principle as I talked about in my sermon. Tithing and offerings. That's how we're able to feed and clothe people. That's how we're able to spread the good news of the gospel. If you haven't started, how about giving the crossword? And I've shared this over and over again. If crossword does not float your boat, find a church you can give to because every church operates under the same principle. I just don't believe in beating people over the head about it. When your heart is right, you'll give unto the purposes of God. If God touches you, let's give. Stretch out your hands to the tithes and offerings. Our Father and our God, we thank you for these gifts that have been given unto your kingdom. We thank you for those who have given in the sanctuary. We thank you for those who have given online. Father, I pray right now that you increase the finances of those who give to expand your territory. And I pray you touch the hearts of all of us so we can give to the kingdom of God. Father God, receive these tithes and offerings upon your throne of grace. It's in Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. Love and appreciate you. As I mentioned, I give online. It comes automatically out of my checking account. How about setting up uh, online giving on our website so that it's natural and you're showing God how much you really appreciate him. Amen. Love and appreciate you. Let's stand. Share this word with somebody. Let them know how much God is blessing you. Our Father and our God, we thank you for what our ears have heard and our eyes have seen. Father, we thank you for entrusting us with so much. With Jesus, we can make it on this side of heaven. So, Father, we thank you for your anointing. We thank you for not giving up on us. Even when we feel like giving up, you will never leave us nor forsake us. Now, Father, bless us as we depart from this place, but never for your loving kindness. Keep us in your keeping care until we meet again. It's in Christ Jesus' name we pray. And all the saints of God said, amen, amen, amen. Love and appreciate you.